everybody, Lefty for Life here, bringing you guys a bit of a different video today. So, the other day, I was watching a uh, video by Appaband. He's uh, becoming one of my favorite, like, commentator kind of videos. He, you know, he'll talk about articles and stuff. And uh, in that video, he was talking about uh, an article from Mary Sue. And during that uh, video, he brought up this article as well. Uh, and it's basically an article by the Mary Sue. If you don't know who the Mary Sue is... It is a uh, feminist uh, news site. I say that loosely. It's very like they only really write articles complaining that they're that uh, games and manga, anime, TV shows, blah 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 blah. That basically women aren't portrayed more often, and blah blah. It's basically a feminist news thing. Uh, and don't get me wrong, that's okay. But however, I I read this article by them and it is so poorly researched and done it I, I i just had to make a video on this it's equally related so it purchased my channel and i figure some of you guys will get a kick out of it uh but also i think some of you might <laughs> uh, lose some brain cells as i felt uh mine just slowly dying while reading this article and it's not a long article too so Anyway, so, at its 20th anniversary, Yu-Gi-Oh! is still stuck in the past when it comes to women. According to Latonio Pennington, this was, re this was uh, released, written, so-and-so, on January 13th, uh, 2016, at 11.50 a.m. I don't know why they got to be so specific at the time and everything. So, this year marks the 20th anniversary of the hit manga series and anime franchise, Yu-Gi-Oh! To commemorate the anniversary, there will be a movie released this spring in Japan that features characters from the original series. As some of you love the English version of the anime series from elementary to high school, I'm super excited about this. However, being the excitement, be, sorry, behind the excitement is a bittersweet feeling that comes from not having a female duelist to look up to as a fan. Oh boy. Okay, so first and foremost... There are a lot of female duelists, okay? Heck, just simply to name a few, there's Rebecca, there's Mai, there's Akiza, uh, there's Zuzu, uh, sorry, Yuzu, not Zuzu, I hate her English name. Uh, <laughs> there's Akiza, there's Yuzu, there's Mai uh, Tatsumi, or uh, no, Masumi, that's her name. Uh, there's L uh, Luna. <laughs> Luna's a really good duelist for being, what, 10? <laughs> okay, there are a lot of really good female duelists. Now, the issue with this comes in that she, from what it has gathered, uh, as I've read later on, she hasn't watched past GX. And even then, you have Alexis and Blair, who are both really good duelists. And then you got the uh, nurse lady, who... Uh, I only duels once, but she was pretty good, almost beat Jaden from what I remember with that No Surfer Kill deck. So there's a lot of really good female duelists to, I guess, look up to uh, in the animes. And yeah, I can't really say anything about her, like, oh, why are you looking up to anybody? Because I'm, I'm not going to lie here. As a kid, I looked up to Kaiba. Uh, not so much for him being a jerk, but for him being just really cool and having blue eyes. So, anyways, Yu-Gi-Oh! was created by Kazuki Takahashi and is set in a world where characters play uh, monsters and magic card game called Duel Monsters. I think it was actually called Monsters and Magic in the manga. Uh, protagonist, blah, blah, blah. This is all stuff we know as Yu-Gi-Oh! players. Uh, in both the anime and manga, blah, 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 blah. Uh, just, again, more general plot summary. And then we get to this right here. Besides Yu-Gi, there are other male duelists, such as his best friend, Joey Wheeler, and his rival, Sato Kaiba. However, the only female duelist in Europe original series was my valentine uh okay so you claimed to be a big fan of the original series right right what about rebecca okay rebecca granted i think she's only dueled twice let me double check she <laughs> she's a really good duelist okay uh okay well she's dueled way more than twice one against yugi where she won although granted he surrendered one against Fei Long, where she lost with Duke. And then she beat Vivian Wrong, which... Oh, hey, is this another female? Oh, hey, look at that. There's another female duelist. Uh, Abe the Monkey Man. <laughs> and she also duelled against Leon von Schroeder. Uh, I know I, pr I did not pronounce that right, but I just, you know. Anyways, so Rebecca here. Now, 
Tony is the well, the second female duelist, and heck, I believe in the background of the Arizona Duelist Kingdom arc, you can see female duelists everywhere <laughs> as they're all walking around and getting off off of the uh, ship to go on to like the island and everything. But now Ollie is Rebecca, what looked like the second primary uh, female duelist. She's the friggin' American Duel Monsters champion, or in the English anime, she's the Intercontinental champion. She is the champion of the whole country's Yu Gi Oh! dueling circuit. And she's how, how old is she? She's eight. She's eight. Well, 12 in, in the Japanese version, but eight in the dub. So, either way, she's a little kid, and she's the American Duel Monsters champion, okay? So, really, that right there just completely throws away that whole argument that Maya is the original, is the only original series door. Not to mention we also got Vivian Long, and I'm pretty sure there were some others, but I haven't seen the original series in so long. I really honestly can't remember all the characters that were side characters, and honestly not all that major. Anyways, compared to her male counterparts, Mai's dueling skills are average. I have to really disagree with that. Mai was a really good dueler, from what I remember. And heck, I even rewatched the first season or so of the original series. And yeah, she kicked butt every time, and she was a really good dueler. Uh, she beat, uh, I think she beat, or kind of came close to beating Joey while they were in the digital world. And, uh, Again, she also pushed Joey to the brink, and if it wasn't for him top decking, uh, what was it, Time Wizard? Did he beat her with? I can't remember. Uh, but look, it, she's a really good duelist, okay? She's not an average one. And heck, just simply to prove it, let's go out and look at her dueling record, okay? Here's her uh, article on the wiki. Uh, uh, just gonna go down over here, and hey, look at this one win, two win, three win, four win. Five wins, six wins, seven wins, eight wins. Eight wins. Now, granted, she does have quite a bit of losses. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. She has seven losses, so eight wins, seven losses. That's uh, not a very good record, but she still, I mean, look at the people who she's dueled against. Uh, John Claude Magnum, don't know. Rex Raptor, didn't he, like, almost tore up, like, a big tournament in the anime? Uh, Stretch Sweater Toast. Uh, she barely lost to Joey. Uh, she beat some unknown dudes. She lost to Panic, who uses psychological warfare big time on his opponents, so I'm not really going to count that. She lost to Yugi, but that was a very back and forth and just very good match. She threw, she almost beat Yugi, uh, from what I remember, with that mirror wall and was Harpy's Pet Dragon. And if it wasn't for, first and foremost, the plot, and secondly, Yugi getting Black Luster Soldier, she probably would have won that game. Uh, never saw on her duel with Joey, if I remember right. That's the uh, duel in the uh, digital world where, like, they stopped the duel halfway through. She beat John Claude Magnum, uh, so, yeah, I got revenge. Oh, wait, she beat him twice. <laughs> she lost to him at Yami Merrick, which, okay, he has an Egyptian god card, and he's just insane. Uh, she beat two of the guys that we don't know. She lost to Valon, whom of which, I think, isn't this guy the, the guy who plays armor monsters? I don't know. Uh, I, I always hear about Valon, and, like, people... Uh, Burning Knuckle, what? I, I can't help but feel like that this is... Okay, yeah, 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 that's the Armor Monsters. Okay, so yeah, she, so she lost to the guy who plays the Armor Monsters. She beat friggin' Pegasus in 151, okay? Pegasus being the creator of the, of the, uh, game and the anime, and also being undefeated with the exception of his loss to friggin' Yugi, okay? And again, that was mainly for the plot. So, she beat Pegasus, okay? She is a good duelist, and really, honestly, her only lose losses are to other really good duelists, and granted, the one with Joey was because of a lucky top deck, but beside the point, she's a really good duelist. She has a card with the deck with cool female monsters and always harpy ladies. She's never depicted as being as skilled as the guys. Again, I disagree with that. We just debunked that with uh, how many she's dueled and all of her like, dueling strategies and stuff. When Maya's dueling skills are first started, she felt that she sprayed different perfumes on her cards to sack out her opponents by making them think she can predict her cards, uh, predict her cards without looking. 
Which, okay, that's a really smart idea, okay? I'm not gonna lie. If she can really figure out, like, all the different scents that she sprayed on those cards, and she came up with that idea herself, that is really smart, okay? Yes, it's a form of cheating, but it's still really, really smart. And that just goes to show you how smart of a person she is. Not just in terms of doing, but in general. She's a really smart person. Alright. And then this is where a person starts complaining that she's a blonde bombshell. It also doesn't help that her character design resembles a blonde bombshell. Okay, keep in mind the manga was written in the 90s where blonde bombshells were pretty much everywhere in every form of media. When she first appears in the anime, Joey Wheeler is drooling over her. Okay, first and foremost, Joey is an idiot. And especially in that first season, whenever he was portrayed as just being mostly comedic relief. That was done in a comedic sense, and it was done to make fun of how big of an idiot Joey Wheeler is. If you look at most uh, if you look at most anime from like the nineties or early two thousands and stuff, whenever a guy sees a hot woman and he starts drooling over her over her, it's to make him seem like an idiot, okay? Look at Brock and how many times he starts drooling over every girl he meets, and then Misty or whoever, or whichever girl Ash is uh, traveling with at the time, whacks him on side, upside the head and then drags him out to, like, just away from the person and stuff. It is portrayed for comedic relief and to make fun of how big of an idiot that person is. To my credit, she was a selfish and prideful character who learned to open up to others. So, in general, she was a sunray, which, yeah, I agree with. Yet to have this baby on her team trait about her says a lot about her character development. Okay. <clears throat> you're an, uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna, you're an idiot! Okay, my, my Valentine, was a really strong, awesome, just, uh, really cool female character, okay? And not only that, but also, she taught Taya a lesson, she taught Yugi a lesson, she actually really helped out the whole team cast get better at dueling, uh, she, well, more so Taya, really, I mean, heck, she let Taya win, so that, uh, in order to, well, just sold Yugi a lesson, not only that, but also super, super, uh, Sorry, getting tongue tied at uh, time. She manages to provide a lot of really good support for Yugi and her fr and uh, his friends as she becomes more of a friend to them than a Sundere because she really does push that Sundere act for quite a while. And I just she she has so many redeeming traits about her other than just her looks. And yeah, she's a really hot character. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, but uh, Akiza better. I like Akiza's more hot than her. Anyway, so. <laughs> Just draw that out, they're going to start a waifu war in the comments, I can already tell. So, a similar thing happens with the secondary character, Anjuma Makisaki. Uh, Taya Gardner in the English version, I'm going to refer to her as Taya from here on out. In the manga, Taya is a childhood friend and love interest for Yugi, even though she's like, what, two, four years older than him? <laughs> I can't, hear, can't remember. He was also busty enough to provide fan service for male readers. So does um, good old Mai, okay? But, however, honestly, they never really showed it off. Even in the Japanese version, for the most part, she wears pretty tan clothing. The only time I can really think of where she, for, where she wears any kind of clothing that might really show off her bust enough is whenever she's in her casual, like, dancing clothes and stuff, whenever her and Yami go out on a bit of a date, kind of. It wasn't really a date, but it kind of was. Uh, everybody remembers that whenever she, like, beats the dueling that, that, that one guy in like a dance dance revolution <laughs> uh, like that that whole episode she was wearing a very tight like tank top from what i remember and that was like the only time you could really see how big her bust was because every other time she wore pretty casual not very tight clothes and honestly it was never like really uh, thrown out there. Mostly because even even though, okay, don't get me wrong, the original series was censored heavily, even in the uncensored version, the anime was still aimed for kids, so they couldn't go and like show her nipples or anything. They, they Like high school DXD, this isn't high school DXD, okay? They couldn't uh, go and show off like, a whole bunch of cleavage. Uh, granted though, they did with Mai a lot, uh, but 
honestly, they couldn't really go over the top, but did, like this person is claiming. And really, there wasn't much fan service in the original series. Heck, like the most amount of fan service in a Yu-Gi-Oh anime I've ever seen uh, was uh, in Part V, where Yu-Gi-Oh trips and he falls over, and he actually looks up uh, Mario's skirt, which. Okay, yeah, that was done for comedic relief, and even then, uh, like, they didn't sell anything, it was all blacked out, and also I think you, uh, Yuya's, like, hair covered up at the part, and it was, again, done for comedic relief, and, heck, the, uh, I've never really watched the Japanese version of the original series, so I can't really comment on the Japanese version, same thing goes for GX and 5Ds and Zexel, so I don't know how much fan service they had, but, for what I remember of the English version, there really wasn't much. That was mostly due to four kids. Uh, anyway, so in the English version, the anime tale was an annoying cheerleader who kept making big speeches about friendship. And there was nothing wrong with that because, don't forget, the original video series was had a really big theme of friends forever. Friendship is strong. Friendship helps us get through tough times. Friends are there to help us and be able to support us. And it's because of our friendships that we're able to, you know, just really be able to power on through things. It's a big theme. You know, friendship is a big theme in the original series. And it honestly, at times, it felt like the original series was a friends forever anime. Now, besides the human female character, some of the female duelists, sorry, dual monsters have titillating <laughs> factors that can overshadow their roles. The most notable example being Dark Magician Girl. Oh, God, here we go. So, as the female counterpart to the Dark Magician, you'd think they'd look more alike. Instead, of dark, instead, Dark Magician gets an outfit that covers everything, while Dark Magician Girl gets an outfit that bears her shoulders and shows cleav cleavage. Furthermore, while Dark Magician looks regal and serious when he's seven, Dark Magician Girl is playful and sexy with winks and poses. Okay. Uh, Miss La La Latonia, what was her name again? Latonia, something like that? Uh, Latonia. Have you ever heard of a parody? Kazuki Takahashi has actually went out and said that when he made Dark Magician Girl, he made her as a parody of the Magical Girl uh, subgenre of anime and manga and stuff, or genre, I should say. Okay, she is a parody, okay? That is her inspiration. She is someone who just kind of beat at her, make fun of it. Not to mention, also, Kazuki Takahashi made her to appeal to more girls. And hey, you know what? It worked. A lot of girl duels have Dark Witches and Girl as her fa favorite character. Hey, and so does a lot of male character <laughs> male duels for obvious reasons, you know? Uh, but yeah, seriously though. The reason being why she's so playful and sexy is she, first and foremost, it's a parody. Secondly, she's not the same as Dark Magician. She's not just a female version of him. She is described in several, like, lore things and everything uh, that she is the younger apprentice of Dark Magician. She's younger. She's more playful. She's got that, like, teen spirit in her still. Dark Magician is a serious adult. He takes his role very seriously. And Dark, well, Dark Magician Girl is kind of goofing off. Like, I, I, I remember seeing a picture once. I don't know if I could ever find it where it's, like, Dark Magician trying to study. And, like, Dark Magician Girl is kind of just playing around, goofing off in the background. It was a fan art, but it was still funny. Okay, the whole idea of this with Dark Magician Girl is she is, first and foremost, a parody? Secondly, she is not the same as Dark Magician. She's a completely different person. And finally, thirdly, she's there to appeal to males and females, but mostly the girl audience, because, well, there wasn't really much in the way of girl characters for the original series, let's be honest here. On top of the lack of skilled female duels and the fan surface female duel monsters, okay, unless you're watching the Japanese version where you have the uncensored artwork of Harpy's uh, lady and stuff like that, there's really not much fan surface female monsters. And, like, even uncensored Dark Rangers and Girls is not very fan surface -y. Uh, is the ability to, is the lack of the ability to play as a female duelist in the Yu-Gi-Oh! games. Okay, so in the Yu-Gi-Oh! games, I'm going to say this now. I have not played very many, but the ones I have played are Duels of the Roses, Dark Duel Stories, uh, and Tag Force 5. Okay? And I think I also briefly played False Final Kingdom once at a friend's house. But here's the thing. In Duels of the Roses, you play as yourself. Okay? So you're, you're you. It's never referred, you're never referred to as a male or female in Duels of the Roses. In Dark Duel Stories, 
I believe it's the same thing. You might be playing as Yugi, though. It's never really stated from what I remember. And in Attack Force 5, you play as a uh, unnamed robot or something. Oh, sorry, spoilers. <laughs> uh, for those of you who haven't gone through the entire story of the Attack Force games. But uh, basically, you play as an unnamed male duelist, okay? And I believe, was I thought there was an option to start to play as a girl. I can't remember. I haven't played the game in forever. But, uh, I played three games from the franchise, so this is what she's played. Forbidden Memories, where you play as Yugi. Capsule Monsters, where you play as Yugi. And Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Spirit Fathers, uh, where you play as a random character that you can name and customize. However, there's no option to play as a female character. Okay, and yeah, I'll give, it, I'll give this to her. Really, honestly, there should be more options in character customization in the Yu-Gi-Oh! games. But I already have to take into effect that the anime, the manga, and even the games, as well as also the card game, are all aimed towards young boys, okay? These, this is a series that has always been aimed towards young boys, and it's, uh, and, and honestly, it's not until recently where they really started having stronger female characters. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, though, Rebecca and Mai are still super strong female characters. I don't know anything about Vivian, so I can't comment on her. <laughs> but anyway, so... Even though the manga and anime were originally targeted towards men, it shouldn't be it shouldn't mean that the female characters have to be reduced to being second best duelists, love interest, fan service characters, cheerleaders, or some combination of these. It also shouldn't mean that there can't be a female lead character, but it seems like the chances of that happening are slim. Okay, look, again, we already debunked all this, okay, Taya, while she was a fairy cheerleader girl, she also was a beginner duel. See was just starting out, and I remember, didn't she duel against the penguin dude, and like, went against him, I can't remember, but, uh, I, I think remember her dueling him, uh, Mai is a really good duelist, you should really stop harping on her, <laughs> uh, and, hey, there's nothing wrong with love interests, love is a natural human emotion, it's gonna happen, okay, and it's okay for a show, especially a kid's show, to go and delve into that concept, it's okay, there's nothing wrong with two people falling in love, or hints of two people falling in love. And also, as for a female lead, actually a lot of people really want a female lead. It's been a big topic from what I've seen among people who are talking about what we could see after Art V. So, I don't know, maybe it will happen, maybe it won't. It'd be really cool. Shame on Konami if they don't, but hey, if they... I mean, hey, it'd be awesome if they do, but eh. Anyway, so... This is where I feel like that she should really go back and do a bit more research. She stopped watching the Yu-Gi-Oh! series after the GX era. Based on the research I've done, little has changed in terms of how female characters are represented. Although I've mostly worked on the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise, I know there is this new generation of female fans who want to see themselves at the Queen of Games. This question is, will she ever arrive? Okay, so... You've, what research have you done of the series? Did you just go and read like little blurbs of the wiki or something, or to ask people who've seen the newer series? Because here's the thing: GX had Alexis. Alexis was awesome, and then there was also Blair. And Blair, well, she started off as a fangirl of Zane. She became her own character later on when she actually started attending Duel Academy. Okay, but however, in 5Ds, you have a Kiza. Akiza, she is currently the, well, she's also actually tied with Yuzu, for having the best win-loss record among the female duelists, okay? Eight, uh, let me, let me double-check this, I believe it's six wins, three losses, okay? Akiza is one of the strongest uh, female characters in the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Not only that, but also she's a big fan favorite. A lot of people love Akiza. A lot of people really, really, really like Akiza. A lot of people like her deck, her character, her arc. She was a very powerful duelist. And she's a very, very strong character. Not only that, but also she's uh, a very intimidating duelist for Black Rose Dragon. She has a very dark backstory and a very touching relationship with Yusei that sadly never blossoms into true love because this is a kid's show and you can't show what happens whenever people actually fall in love and start dating, which really kind of sucks because it'd be interesting to see by people like uh, Yu Gi Oh actually explore this. And also, apparently, Akiza became a doctor. I did not know that. But, uh, she is a really good, well-liked female character. She's <laughs> very strong. And while, well, yes, it is a sad to mention that in the latter part of, uh, of 5Ds, 
she does become a bit more of a cheerleader as her role in the story kind of dumbs down a bit, which was rumored to be because of her whole, like, thing with a cult and stuff. Originally, apparently, uh, the whole cult with, like, Sayer and stuff was supposed to be explored more. But because of, uh, oh, like, accusations that one of the, that one of the female voice actors was, uh, like, part of a cult or something. And, yeah, that's just, they had to cut all ties with that. But, anyways... <clears throat> She is a really good, well-liked duelist and character in general, not just for her dueling skills, but also for her, you know, story, her background, everything. I don't know what kind of research this lady did, but she knows nothing about Akiza. Okay, so let's see here. One win, two win, three win, four win, five win, six win, and then for her losses, one, two, three. She has six wins, three losses. Now let's jump over to Yuzu, uh, the main female character of Art V. Again, a lot of people were really like Yuzu. She's awesome, she's strong. She beats on Yuya whenever uh, he does something stupid. She gives really good pep talks. She is, like, you see, obviously Yuya's main love interest, but however, uh, <coughs> she. They, they don't really play on it too much, and it's like hinted that she loves Yuya, but like Yuya, well, he deeply cares for her. He doesn't like love her, which kind of sucks. So it's kind of obvious he loves her at some point because of some of the things that Yuya has done to just simply save her. And Yuzu is a really strong female character. She's also got six wins, three losses, like uh, Akiza. See, one, two, three four, five, and six, and then one, two, and three, and, uh, really, honestly, the only issue is that she hasn't dueled in, like, over 40 episodes, well, over 30 episodes, uh, that's because she's kind of become a bit of a damsel in distress lately, but, uh, well, that's okay, because of just simply how much the story, about, about how the story's going and everything. Now, Yuzu is a really strong character, her archetype that she plays, Melodious, is a female-oriented archetype, and it's a really awesome one. And also, it's not fan service and the slightest, like the Harpy ladies are, or the Magician girls. Also, by the way, Akiza plays a plant deck, and her main boss monster is a friggin' dragon that is a giant black rose. You know, black rose dragon! <laughs> so, really, honestly, this lady has not done very much research. Uh, what little research she has done, she hasn't done much of it. Like, really, honestly, uh, Miss Latonia, I would recommend that you go and watch 5Ds. Uh, skip Sexual, it's terrible, and then watch uh, Art Fee. Ready to know, even Sexual, as terrible of an anime it is, has strong female characters with Rio and... Uh, I don't know if, uh, yeah, Tori is kind of a strong character, she's uh, always there, and she is a strong character overall, but, yeah, that's my general thoughts on this. Honestly, Yu-Gi-Oh, yeah, okay, well, Yu-Gi-Oh, I really hope has a female main character in the next series. Uh, I've heard rumors that the next series might just be a remake of the original series, but, look, this video has been going on for long enough, but seriously, though, this person has it all wrong, she's just not really looking into the characters, and honestly, I think she's going off of mostly memory with this, okay? I've rewatched a portion of the original series, and I watched 5Ds relatively recently, and I've been following Arc V quite a bit, so I know these characters quite a lot. The, she doesn't... I don't think she did very much research, honestly. So guys, some of you guys say about this article. If you want to read it for yourself, it will be down below. This is an archived version of it, so I don't know if like, there's been any changes. Thank you all for watching. I don't think I'm ever going to do any more of these, but it, I just wanted to do this because it angered me quite a bit that this person did so little research about these characters, and especially about the character that she mainly focused on, being my and everything. So guys, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Have a great day. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And see you all later. What's your thoughts on this uh, article? I, I think it's a terrible article. She really could have done a lot more research and she really honestly just needs to uh, learn what a strong character is really honestly because Mai is a very strong character <laughs> uh, anyways guys see you all later thank you all for watching have a great day peace out